Hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> um, can you tell the world who you are and what you do? I am uh, Karim Rashid and I'm a designer. And I design micro to macro, so everything from a mobile phone to a building. Wow. How um, influential are you in, in your world? Um, I, well, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm well known in my world, but I, I think more importantly for me is to be influential in the public realm, in, in more of the mass world. So, I'll give you an example. I'm making 11 hotels right now around the world, 17 buildings, a lot of products. I've designed for everybody from Berkeley Co to Samsung to Sony to a huge list of people, actually. Quite a lot. I do a lot of work. Wow. I'm a pretty. Um, obsessed with what I do. So I design everything from shoes to installations to furniture, lighting, people like our team today in Bonaldo and Casamania and many Italian companies and French companies, companies all over the world. And I operate out of, I have an office in Shenzhen in China and in New York. Right. Um, men's style fashion organically in the last three months, but we've gone into the world of luxury. For me, luxury, hotels are very dated in their marketing because they're not telling the story, they're not telling the lifestyle. Yeah. I think, it, well, first of all, I have a big critique on that. I think, first of all, that the, the notion of what we call luxury ended in the 20th century. I think 21st century luxury is, is free time. 21st century uh, luxury is communi communication, it's connectivity, it's human relations, it's spending time with friends and family. Luxury is about having an opportunity in this world to um, to do what you have a passion for. In other words, if you could spend your life in your job and it's something that you always wanted to do, that's mm. a luxurious existence. So it's not any more about material, it's not any more. And the fashion industry is very steeped in all that, and these old, very old notions of what luxury is. In fact, the fashion world is so, I think, um, perversely uh, corrupt in, in the way that it operates because it's uh, trying to hang on to, to ideals that don't exist anymore. The world's changed a lot. And I think the de democracy of, of the quality of the mass production of the 20th century changed all that, meaning that you know, from on the low end you can get amazing things as much as you can on the high end. So the high end is obviously having trouble competing. And so what they're trying to do is ostracize themselves or, or put themselves in a, in a market. It's a little bit like the art world. Yeah. It's trying to find a, a very small, narrow, very rich market to intentionally kind of separate itself to survive. It's a form of survival. But, you know, at one time what luxury was, was when 30 men took four months to build a Rolls Royce. Yeah. And today a car, no car, is built uh, without robotic machinery. So the question is then why pay 300? thousand euro for a car. It has to be a good reason for it. So I think that's where the big question is in the notion of what luxury is. But it says a fashion, especially men's fashion, since this is what you do. And I, I, I think that it's amazing how I travel the whole world. I'm working in 47 countries and I know fashion very well. It's amazing how little or few fashion designers are doing things that are at all relevant to the time in which I live. We live in the 21st century, right? We live in a digital age, information age. It's an amazing time we live in. And people are, are the fashion industry, all it does is perpetually appropriate or reappropriate or derive history in the past, which has nothing to do with the world we live in. So it's amazing. I find it very, very actually kind of uh, frustrating. I keep thinking I should be doing my own fashion line, but I just am so busy that it's like the kind of last thing on my mind. Although I flirt in fashion a little bit. Like I've done a line of jeans for seven jeans. I did a line of shoes. For Fasur, I've done a few things here and there, but it's uh, it's it, it, fashion should be today about high performance, technology, casual age, things that are irrelevant. Like for example, sports equipment. Right? If you play sports, you wear yeah. really high performing uh, clothes. Right? Yeah, yeah. So if you're a runner like I am, yeah. I wear the most the greatest lightweight technological running shoes, right? So then I think, well, then why, if I'm going out to a dinner party or something, shouldn't I also be wearing something high performance? Mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, even the point of, like, what I did a few years ago, is just three years ago, I got rid of every suit I own because I decided I, that the suit is, is an archetype from history that has nothing to do with the time I live in. So mm -hmm. I got rid of all that. I just keep getting rid of things, I notice, because I don't want to live in the past. I want to live in the present, so. We all have our David versus Goliath moment. What's yeah. yours? 
<laughs> I mean, you must have many, but then for me, I'm living one which is it's going to make or break me, but it's making me. It's, re it's defining who I am anyway. Yeah, that's... that's well, I, I don't know. That's a very good question, actually. You know, I... I noted that even though I have I have an incredible amount of work right now and I'm very busy, if you see my work, if you look at it, especially from the interior and architecture point of view, is people are very afraid of me because my work is very, almost as if you took, let's say, the digital age and turned it into a physicality. Mm -hmm. um, so I could, I guess, be doing a lot more work and having a lot more, let's say, clients and projects if I was far more conservative. Mm. So the, the, the David in me is is that I'm I'm trying to push real lot of boundaries, but the Goliath is 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 the overriding prevalence of a banal and conservative world that we live in. And that's the pressure. Yes. The pressure is that to to funny because the hotel I'm staying at right now here in Paris is a new little boutique hotel. And I stay in hotels. I check out hotels all the time because I designed them, right? And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking and I'm saying to my friend that I'm not capable of this sort of thing. I'm just trying to make these warm, cozy, past experiences. Right. What are you thinking of the boutique concept? Because I've reviewed about seven now. Hotels? Um, and I've always just stayed at the Shard, London, oh, yeah. then the Cafe Royal Hotel, then the Ritz. So I'm getting a... And I'm... I, I, I love them both, but I love history, but I'm not quite sure the boutique kind of way. It's like you what, going home. Well, I left home for a reason. I want a kind of different experience. Yeah, so I don't want to pay a lot of money to go back into one. Yeah. That, that's my personal. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, That's the old idea of hotels. Post-World War II for Holiday Inn's motto was home away from home. Yeah. So that you would feel, no matter where you traveled in the world, you'd feel safe. But the hotel industry changed. I think in the 80s, you know, Schrager and Philip Stark, they changed. They, they drove this notion that the boutique hotel is an experience that you would never have at home. So you go and you have this three-day phenomenal kind of new inspiring experience yes and then you go home and realize how how dull your domestic environment is <laughs> and how dull your life is and that became prevalent then everybody picked up on it and the larger businesses like Sheraton then started doing W hotels mm -hmm. yep. and, and Hyatt did Hondas and etc cetera, etc cetera. I've been doing a lot of lately I think there's a big market for it um, I'm doing in Germany and Norway and all over the world actually is a budget kind of two-star budget hotel 39 euro to stay but super designed experience yeah but for me to go to a hotel, like I just finished a really nice boutique hotel, opens in four weeks in Tel Aviv. For me, it's, it's kind of an ex to not only have an experience you never have at home, but not just this form of theater, which is what Schrager and Stark did. It's kind of almost a sort of pretense, a kind of a fake kind of moment. But to just go and have a kind of experience that is so connected with this moment in which I live, where the technology yeah. is seamless, yes. where everything just works perfectly. Yeah. You know, it's me, so for me, that's the, the really important part about a hotel. For me, the important part of a hotel, I walk into the bathroom and it's just, you know, the floor is all made of rubber, or the sink is made of rubber, or these things that are really about the time in which I live. You know, they're really engaging, they're really casual, they're really human. Um, so not, not just decorative, not decoration for the sake of decoration. And that high-end hotels you're talking about, the, the, this kind of hotel, luxury hotel business, you know, there'll always be a market for that. And yeah. I think I would even, you know, I, I haven't had an opportunity to design a luxury hotel, which I would mm -hmm. love to do. Oh, I mean, right. I did one. I did one in Athens, Greece called Semiramis right. in 2001. Um, but I don't do that many of them because I'm just not asked. But, right. uh, but well, they, the Ritz they, has just burnt down here. Oh, did? Right? Yeah, but but they, they do things like they'll take the bathroom and clad it entirely in some precious stone. I don't think that that's, again, no. what luxury should be at all. You know? So I would like to do a luxury hotel where I turn all that stuff upside down a little bit, where okay. the luxury is what the luxury of a phenomenal experience, not the luxury of yeah. pretentious materials. Well, you've just like. defined the concept we've just done last month. I'm the very few women in the world that's talking about menswear. In fact, my message is simple. The man on the street, I just want him to dress well. Yeah. White, Paris, winter. Talk <laughs> about your well, epic uh, first of all, my, personal style. My wardrobe uh, for the last 17 years is only white. And then I have a little block of pink and a little block of fluorescent lime. 
and that's it. That's all my wardrobe is. And why? Um, because I wanted to be free. I wanted to be autonomous. I wanted to feel light. And it was a way of me, let's say, projecting that sensibility, projecting mm. a certain sense of, of, how can I say, freedom. And number one, and I think number two is, is that I don't, I don't buy into all the, this kind of um, conformity. And fashion is so full of conformity. And men, speaking of men, it's a crazy conservative market. Men are so afraid, afraid completely. Yeah, it's got a long way to go. Um, yeah, it, it, well, things, it things, has are start, a... things are starting to change. I mean, this, the advent of even the name metrosexual, which we were talking about, which is so funny, is that uh, is it was really trying to say, oh, here's men that care for themselves. They use skincare products. They, you know, what, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> that's the beginning, I think, of this big shift. And I think that's also driven from the kind of gay community too. Yeah. And it started now. It's kind of gone over into the heterosexual community that men should worry, worry about themselves and yes. their appearance and all that. In some cultures, it was always there. Like the yeah. Italians, men always yeah. kind of cared for themselves. Certain cultures, but in general, in most of the world, it's this idea that men can just, you know, I don't know, be totally inconsiderate of themselves, but they expect their women to be all perfect and dressed, and mm. you know. And I think that's a huge misogynist hypocrisy. And I think that. It's about time that men really put themselves together. And you know, and most men don't know how to dress. And I don't know if that's because their mothers dress them. Or what. They, they don't even know. You know. They're insecure about what they buy or what they wear or how, what fits them or what doesn't fit them. Um, and they don't, a lot of men, they're really afraid that they're going to stand out. Yes. You know, that's yes. really like makes them really yes. nervous.